your welcome to this overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. Salvation has come. In this lesson, Jesus affirms, first, salvation has come, the King has come, the Lord has come, the Messiah has come, and judgment has come. This teaching outline is different from levels of textual discourse analysis which derive from a book's argument, its various parts, its pericopes or events, its paragraphs, sentences, clauses, phrases, and vocabulary. During this lesson, please try to discover at least one new idea, perhaps a truth to believe, a promise to claim, or a command to obey. A few points of background and historical notes. Here we see a sycamore fig tree. Sycamore trees have strong, low branches which are easy to climb on. Exodus chapter 22 had set payback rates required of thieves who were caught. Any coin called a mina was approximately 100 days wages or about 25 sheep. It was common for officials to ride donkeys in civil processions, and merchants operated in the temple area selling animals to sacrifice to foreign worshippers. Herod was the family name of a succession of kings and rulers. Now, both Herod the Great in 40 BCE and his son Archelaus in 4 BC, possibly 1 CE, went to Rome to receive a kingdom. However, an embassy of some 50 individuals, including family members, also went to Rome to oppose Archelaus' appointment. Jesus knew that Roman armies would destroy much of Israel, which happened between 65 and 72 CE, who then leveled Jerusalem following the first Jewish revolt in 135. Section 1, Salvation Has Come. I think you know the story of Zacchaeus who climbed into a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. There were actually two Jerichos at this time, the old city and a new one established by King Herod. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Now all the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Well, just what did people think about tax collectors in those days? Well, here's Zacchaeus, a changed man. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Why did Zacchaeus say this? Had he truly repented? Why half of his possessions? Why not all of them? And why four times the amount? This was required by the law. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, 
because this man too is a son of Abraham. For I, the son of man, came to seek and to save the lost. Now, what are three meanings of the term house as used in the Bible? Of course, it could be a dwelling, or the household, those who dwelt in the place. It was often used of the nation called the house of Israel. Why call Zacchaeus a son of Abraham? Perhaps Jesus is demonstrating that the Lord is fulfilling his promise to Abraham by bringing salvation to the house of Israel. Anyway, the term the lost here in Greek says, who or what was lost? Well, what was lost? And what does the term salvation normally mean in Luke? if not resurrection from the dead and participation in the coming messianic kingdom. Part 2. The king has come. A note about Herod Archelaus. He was the son of Herod the Great and Malthrace of Samaria, born in 23 BCE and dying in 18 CE at Jericho, thus very known to this population. He ruled until about 6 CE. He had gone to Rome where Caesar Augustus appointed him ethnarch, not king, over Samaria, Judea, and Idumea. Whilst they were listening to this, Jesus went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. The man of noble birth in this case was Archelaus. Now, various kinds of coins have been found throughout Israel, including this 2200-year-old gold coin. So the man called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas, one each, saying, Put this money to work until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We do not want this man to be our king. There is also a double theme in this parable, one about servants and the other about subjects. Whom do they represent? He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well, how could you possibly earn a tenfold return on investment, except in agriculture? Well, they came back with their earnings. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina or your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You, take charge of five cities. Now, what character quality does Jesus want his followers to demonstrate? Not as much great productivity as great faithfulness. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. As they say, you take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. Now this was a proverbial saying, neither an insult nor an accusation. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back I could have collected it with interest? So Jesus replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given, 
And as for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Back to the parable. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. So how did this event apply in Jesus' day? Think about Herod and Archelaus. And how would it apply a few years later? Messiah's enemies would be put to death. How does this apply to us today? Or does it? How will this apply when Jesus return? Part 3. The Lord has come. Jesus would pass through Bethany and Bethpage over the Mount of Olives to arrive at Jerusalem. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. Part 4. The Messiah has come. Luke, in his Gospel, employs at least seven messianic titles for Jesus. He is called King of the Jews before his crucifixion. Here he is called Lord and Messiah or Christ, the Savior, Son of David, Son of God, and Son of Man. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Many of the ancient stones used to build the temple still lie scattered in Jerusalem. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd say to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, then the stones will cry out. Now, who was to be both King and Lord? the Messiah, the Christ. And what stones? The pebbles lying on the path, or the very stones of Jerusalem? Part 5. Judgment has come. Jesus knew that Rome would soon invade Israel and destroy Jerusalem. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had known on this day what would bring you your peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. Now, what would have brought peace if not acceptance of Messiah? They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognize the time of Messiah's coming to you. Indeed, a seven-year tribulation began in 65 and continued through 72, until the fall of Masada. Roman armies slaughtered much of the population. 
and they destroyed the temple in 70, then leveled Jerusalem after 135 CE. So what did you discover in this lesson? What truths can you affirm? What promises will you claim? What commands are you going to obey? Your assignment for next time is to read Luke chapter 1945 through chapter 20. Then visit the website luke.cura.download and as you do so, compile your insights, queries, and observations to share with others.